Welcome, men. Uh, back in the living room. Fire's warm behind me. I think the fire actually just went out. But I'm cold. It's cold outside. Um, yes, I'm wearing a tank top. It's for a purpose. I'll get to that later. Not just because I'm comfortable. <laughs> I am comfortable. <clears throat> so I'm into chapter five of this book. Uh, Discipleship Essentials. Greg, oh, that's a terrible way to hold that because it'll look funny. Anyway. Prayer is the title of this chapter. And getting, getting right into it, the first part this reads is this. Prayer is a transparent dialogue. It's a conversation with God in which we address Him and in quiet are addressed by Him. There are four types of prayer which are sur surmised by the acronym ACTS. My voice is starting to go. I've been teaching a National Lifeguard course all week. And so forgive me if, I'm, uh, if I sound a little hoarse. It's just because I've been talking a lot. Um, so, Acts, prayer. Adoration. Appreciating God for who he is apart from what he has done for us. Confession. Acknowledging God, uh, to God our specific sin and seeking his pardon. Thanksgiving, appreciating God for his benefit to us, for the things he's done, given us, right? Supplication, fancy word. Uh, interceding for ourselves or others according to God's will, right? So that's an acronym, ACTS. Uh, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Um, it was just like, like $10 words right there. <laughs> They're, uh, they're pretty plain, though, as, as they get into the whole chapter, what, what each one kind of breaks down to, right? And the memory verse for this, I mean, it's, it's very fitting, is uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. And if you have to look it up, that's fine. If you don't, you already know that it's the Lord's Prayer, Right? Uh, I'm going to read it out of scripture. I don't know. This feels like the right thing to do. <laughs> All right. So Jesus is talking with his disciples. Just a little background there, right? And they've been talking about prayer for a little bit. And when they go to him and they, ask, you know, mid conversation, and they keep asking, about prayer and how to do this and what it should look like. And he talks about not being like hypocrites and this and that. But he says to them, starting in verse 9, he goes, This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. I wonder if that reads differently in other translations, right? Uh, they bring that up, and then they say, you know, jump jump over to the, the study portion of the book to Luke chapter 11. So if you want to jump there real quick, because this should be very similar sounding. Um, oh, that's 13. Here's Luke 11, right? When, when, Jesus, when Jesus' disciples asked them the same thing, Right? They go, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. Right? Sounds very similar. This is one of those sections that like, you find it in different port, uh, parts of the Gospels. That was just two. I'm not going to worry about going into the other two sections, the two Gospels, to find that. So it gets in, the, 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 the book here gets into uh, how do we pray, right? You know, looking at the Psalms and how the psalmists used adoration to lift up God's name. Uh, so there's an expert here from Psalm 145. Uh, verses 1 through 3. I will exalt you, my God, the King 
I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. All right, so that's adoration. That is picking the points about God and, and just speaking them to him. Right? This is prayer. You are commuting with the Almighty. You are talking to the Lord. And when you're praising him, you're you're talking to him about all of these things that he's incredible for. That's adoration. That's that, wow, you're amazing. Right? And and expressing that in the way that you can. Uh, confession. They have this really neat portion here on, in the confession section. And they go, uh, in Greek, confess meant means to agree with. So in confessing to God, we are agreeing with God about what he sees. By making confession a regular part of our conversation with the Lord, we are giving him permission to show us our lives through his eyes. Our prayer is, Lord, let me see, let me see me as you see me. That's a bit of a tongue tire there, but the the intent is to, to, to offer yourself bare, right? To to let to let that act of confession to go, God, I know the things that I'm trying to hide from you. I know you can see them because you know everything. And I'm I'm here to own up to what it is that I that I keep holding on to, thinking that I can keep doing these things. And it's not, you know, it's not like these things are against your will. When you full on know they are. Right? When you when you pretty much understand your actions, the way you interact with people, your spouse, your children. <sighs> Difficult things, right? About the, those little things we'd like to not have to deal with. But we know that once we do, life gets better, right? That's confession, right? Being, putting yourself under God's lens and microscope and being willing to let him work with you and sand those edges off and, and get better. Right? The whole point of prayer and confession is to offer yourself up to change, to offer yourself up to the leading of the Holy Spirit so that these things don't continue. Right, That's the whole point. Thanksgiving. Right, I, I get Thanksgiving. Um, there's a little insert here about a gentleman. What's the guy's name? I'm going to read it out to you. So for those of you who know the name, uh, the man's name is Eddie Rickenbach, Rickenbacker, right? Uh, he, was a, he was a pilot in World War II, I'm trying to deliver a message to General Douglas MacArthur. I'm going to be honest, I don't know who either of those guys are, but the story is neat because the eight men in the plane all go down, they all wind up in a dinghy, and they are hungry, and they've been lost at sea. And they share a midday devotional, and later that day, as, you know, He's resting with his hat over his face so he doesn't get sunburnt or trying to avoid it. A seagull lands on his head. And he takes that moment and realizes God sent food. <laughs> Nowhere near land. A seagull lands on you. Right? It's tired. It's not going anywhere. There's no fight left in this bird. God sends food. Thanksgiving. The man never forgot to thank God for that. Spent a lot of time probably doing it. The final one is supplication. Right? So supplication, they, they struggle with this because it's a it's a concept more than it is just, just a word, right? Supplication means to ask with intensity, earnestness, and perseverance. Perseverance to ask and to keep on asking in the context of prayer. Ask and it will be, you know, what Jesus says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. I. I haven't known struggle, right? I mean, not in the not in that greater context of, oh no, I had to work really hard to get where I am, right? Ah, I went to school, I worked to pay my bills, I worked to pay my student debt, uh, I worked to feed my family. I I I put myself through challenges to hunt, again to feed my family. 
Uh, but that's twofold. I enjoy the outdoors, right? So that's fun for me. It's not like it's a necessary challenge to life. I, I'm a Métis guy. I don't look it. I don't look native. I'm a, I, for all intents and purposes, I'm a white guy. I get it, right? Uh, I'm a big dude. People don't try to get in my way. It's been like this since I was a teenager. So physically, I know that I'm imposing. I have to try and make myself more appealing. <laughs> and as a, as a swim instructor, as uh, someone who works with kids a lot, especially down at the youth center, uh, there's this, <laughs> there's this swing, right? Where I can be imposing and I can be scary. And I have often heard from people going, I, I don't want to meet you in a dark alley. You're a terrifying individual, right? I'm really not. And most big, most people aren't, they, they're not scary, but I get it, right? So supplication and to have to persevere, right? To ask intensely and in earnestness, I, I don't know that I've needed to do this. So this is why I struggle with this one. Not because, well, it's not necessary for me. It's because of my lack of experience with it, right? For those of you who have had to fight and claw and work your butts off to get where you are, you're going to have a better understanding of what supplication looks like to earnestly Go after something and pray day and night to survive, right? For something so important that I've, I've been, I've had access to. So this is why this one's hard for me to understand. For the rest of you, right? If, if you don't understand supplication, look through someone else's eyes. Get to know someone and understand what their struggle is and why they have had to pray and pray and pray for those moments, right? If you're wealthy, if you've never had to use credit card after credit card after credit card, and you've had to risk everything just to feed your family, maybe you need to talk to people who have and find out how you can, you know, learn and learn, learn to pray in, from that space, but also maybe help take care of them. Right? That's supplication, right? This is, <laughs> he has another nice little insert here, right? Uh, John Piper says that a prayerless Christian is like a bus driver trying to push his bus out of a rut by himself because he know that Clark Kent is on board. If we knew, we would ask. Clark Kent is, for those of you who aren't aware, is the alter ego of Superman. Now the shirt. I said I would talk about it, and here it is. Uh, I'm done with the book. Prayer. I, having been involved in ministry for eight, 18 years? Oh my goodness, my wife is nodding at me now. I think it's been almost 18 years. It'll definitely be that this summer, uh, well, this September at least coming up. I know it's months away, yada, yada, it's the winter here, whatever. I, I will have been part of a ministry for that long. And I'm excited and I love it. And I love the people I've met over the years and the people I have seen move away, uh, college friends and more college kids, right? But prayer time and again has been such a part of that ministry. And I've seen things from machines start working in for no reason to uh, gas gauges filling up while you're driving. Okay, maybe that's just an old rusty piece of car. But when you're broke and you have no idea how you're going to fill the fuel tank because the fuel tank leaks and it shouldn't be filling, that's that's an answered prayer, especially one when you were praying and watching it happen. Those are weird moments, right? <laughs> um, so the shirt, <laughs> it's a goofy looking logo. I get it. I don't know if you can see the whole thing, um, but it's in reference to a, a, a friend who, who runs the youth center. I don't know. If you know his name, I'm not going to mention it. If you do, have fun with him. Go ask him why. <laughs> but there was this crazy night oh, almost three years ago now. And almost four years ago. It'll be four years, September. Where uh, we had an incident. We, we smell breath. We used to smell breath. We don't run anymore, right? Nobody smells anything. <laughs> um... We would smell the breath. We would greet kids before they come in the building. We don't let them in because they've been drinking or maybe they're doing drugs. We have to turn away with a zero tolerance policy because we want this place to be a free space from that, right? 
kids would come to avoid that at their homes. They don't want to be in that kind of environment. So that's why we, we, we do that. Anyway, we, we noticed a, a gentleman, an adult from the city, uh, stumbling along. So we put two and two together. Oh, he's probably under the influence. He sits down by the door. We bring everything, we bring everyone inside. And at this point, I'm just like, I will smell breath later. We'll figure this out because we you know, try not to intermingle because this can lead to a problem. So I turn to one of our other volunteers, say, hey, let's go pray that this gentleman just ups and goes home and leaves, right? This is the plan. No sooner does this volunteer turn and go, where did this guy gets up and runs off? And I do mean run up and gone, right? Like prayer answered right then and there. <sighs> this story continues, but it turns out that throughout the night, uh, our, our security guys, our roving patrol who walk around the city street and pray and watch for incidents on, on, in the neighborhood, happen to see this guy and think, oh man, this isn't good, right? They see this guy again and, um, we wind up having to call the police to make sure that this guy doesn't hurt himself or hurt anyone else. So my friend who this shirt logo is all about, winds up going over and helping the police make sure they find the right guy and make sure that people are now safe. Anyway, he comes back and he's so excited and giddy and talking about what just happened. Like he's some you know, citizen arrest type. It was hilarious, a great moment. So we dubbed him the citizen's elbow. We, it's this like superhero moniker for our friend. It's great, it's kind of a joke, but at the same time it was celebrating his, his excitement, right? But prayer was part of that and then praying for the people who were affected by the incident throughout the night, right? The reality is prayer probably saved somebody's life that night, right? And the truth of it is continuing, continual prayer uh, does do that, right? Praying for people, interceding for people. It has a huge effect. So if prayer is new to you, Right? What are those, those four things? Learn the Lord's Prayer. If that's all you know how to do is just repeat the Lord's Prayer, you're doing okay. Right? The uh, four different types of prayer. Remember that ACTS acronym? Adoration, Confession, Thanksgiving, Supplication. It's a big deal. Lives get changed. Prayer has such a massive effect. If you don't yet daily spend some time in prayer, think about starting, right? As a Christian, as a man of faith, you want to be going to the source, right? You want to be going to God to get that community, right? To, to mature, to grow, whatever, right? <gasps> Pardon me, sorry. Um, Be excited about it, right? Be angry about it. God desires your attention, right? <sighs> the very least, an emotional response is a good one, right? He can handle you yelling at him. He can handle you whispering and awkwardly mumbling your way through a prayer. He hears it all. Thanks for tuning in. Love you guys. I'm going to pray. Lord, we thank you. We, we were astonished by your greatness. What a blessing it is to be able to talk openly and freely about who you are and how you are affecting change in our lives. I pray that all the men, young, old, the boys, would get to know who you are and that they would make daily prayer a part of their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good night, guys.